Hello there. My name is Ruth Miller, and I'm here to talk about the autumnal equinox. When we come to this time of year, school has started again for those of us who are involved with kids. Some of us have been in school so many years that we think the school has started again, even if it isn't our own or our kids. One of the memories that we begin to feel are the memories of walking down the street with those leaves that we can kick, or maybe even raking up piles of leaves. I know I'm here on the Oregon coast and the equinox storm happened just the other day, night, night before last, bringing down the first of the leaves for the year lifting up all kinds of interesting things that were left around over the summer, pretty much ending the blackberries. Blueberries were down a month or so ago. Currants, eh, maybe. A few fruits left on the trees. The apples are pretty much done. It is the turning, the turning of the year. And when that happens, our bodies begin to shift our bodies begin to think about curling up inside. So this time of year is celebrated by many, many cultures. And these cultures each have their own name and their own traditions, but they all involve some of the same thing, recognizing that one season has come to an end and another one is about to start. Now we know, particularly on the coast, when it is this time of year, because that sun is setting directly west. It has been very far north. It has been journeying south. Every sunset is a little closer to west. And now it is due west. And then over the next few months, every sunset will be a little further south until it is in the deep southwest at the winter solstice. And this is, for those of you who haven't seen this, a result of the way that the earth is tilted as it goes around the sun. It is different angles, different parts of the earth are facing the sun. At the summer solstice, the top of the earth is facing the sun. You can see that even the North Pole doesn't get any dark. It stays light 24 hours. And then as we come around to the equinox, there it is, equal, half and half. At the winter solstice, the winter, the North Pole doesn't get any light. It stays dark for 24 hours. And it will be deep summer in the lands down under. And then the spring equinox will happen. And again, the sun will be setting in the middle, you know, sun setting and rising. And we will be moving into spring. This ending of summer, this ending of summer, this ending of playing outside, getting much too warm and wearing as little as possible and finding fruits to just gather and playing in the water is coming to an end. Those long warm days are over. We're beginning to see the colors in the trees, beginning to see stillness and, and again, the rains are returning and the days are getting shorter. The sun is rising later and setting earlier. In the Hebrew tradition, this is the beginning of the year. The ancient peoples of the Middle East were experiencing long, dry summers as we do. The ram's horn, the trumpets that brought down the walls of Jericho, the sound of the beginning of possibilities. For the Unitarian Universalists, September is the month of exploring possibilities, embracing the possibilities. 
and for the Hebrews, the 10 days following Rosh Hashanah are the days, the high holy days, the days of reconnecting with family, the days when Jewish people begin to let go of the pains and the sins and the upsets of the previous year so that they can begin the new year after the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, with a clean slate and a new record, a new relationship with their God. In the northern climates, in the Celtic regions, this is the time of the second harvest. Those of us who live in the temperate areas may recall or may have observed farmers gathering in their crops in the June, July time and may have actually been picking for ourselves fruits and berries during that early summer. And then there is the replanting and, or the emergence of the longer term crops, the grains and the seeds, the sunflower seeds among them, and other fruits that come in at this time of year. Mabon or Mabon is the second harvest. The next harvest will be in a few weeks, about six weeks, the midpoint between the equinox and the solstice. And we call that, or the Wiccans call that, the Celts call that Sawain. We call it Halloween. In the second harvest, all kinds of things are possible. So Mabon, honoring the second harvest, and reconnecting with our ancestors. But we're not the only ones reconnecting with our ancestors. The Asians have been doing so in many ways. And in Japan, this particular time of year, several days actually, very much like the High Holy Days of the Jewish tradition, are a time for connecting with the ancestors at the cemeteries and in the temples and with this particular special flower called the spider lily. And so, as with every season, every culture honors the process, recognizes what is going on with the earth, with their own bodies and minds. As the season is shifting, as we're moving from those long, warm, dry days to cooler, wetter days, we begin to shift from mostly outdoor activities to mostly indoor activities, yes. We start cooking more too. And we stop, our, our diets shift from fresh greens and fruits to more nuts and root veggies and cured meats and things like that. And many people who have been feeling called to wander during the warmer, brighter, longer days are feeling called to return. And that return is not just not just to the home or to school, but to return to a way of being, as a sense of, you know, who I truly am. That's what it's about, isn't it? So in these cultures all over the world, we will see specific things harvested. We will have feasts and ceremonies to connect with our, our past and their heroes and our ancestors, storytelling becomes more important during this time of the year. But the most important thing is that we are laying a foundation at this time of year. We're beginning that process, just beginning, to lay the foundation for the coming year and the coming lifetime whether it's in a school situation, in a worship situation, in our farm, in our garden, in our home, just in our soul. This is the time when we begin again. I wish you well at this Maybon, Bohigan, and High Holy Days of the Fall Equinox. Blessed.